From the very beginning, God has moved his plans and purposes and written his story through the context of community. If we turn all the way back to the very early pages of the book of Genesis, we read that God says, let us make man in our image to be like us. If we listen to the words he's using, they're plural in nature. God exists in community as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's a doctrine that we call the Trinity. So God himself exists in community and we were created by community and we read that God created man but found that it was not good that man should be alone. And so he created Eve to be with him. And God began to move his story through the context of the community called the family. And then we turn a few pages over and we see that God says to Abraham, I will make you a great nation and through you all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And God began to write his redemptive story through the community of the nation of Israel. And then in the New Testament, we find that Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus formed a new community, the community of the church. Now, we often think about the church as being an event or an organization, something that we go to. But nowhere in scripture do we ever find anybody saying, I'm going to go to church That idea didn't even make sense because church wasn't something that you went to. It wasn't something that you did. It was something that you were. The church was a group of people, a community of people connected by a common experience, a transformed life with relationship with Christ and a common mission to take that relationship, that good news to the world around them. It's reflected in what Paul says to the church at Thessalonica when he said, we loved you so much that we shared with you not only the gospel, but our lives as well. What is a small group? That's a small group. It's a group of people, a community of people that come together because of a shared experience, a relationship with Christ, a life that is transformed by the gospel, and a group of people that are willing to do life together. Now, very practically, what does this mean for us today in Washington, D.C.? A small group is a community of people, usually somewhere between eight to 12 people, it can be more than that, can be a little less than that, usually meeting once a week, sometimes, again, more frequently, sometimes less frequently. But they come together for two purposes. One, to share life together, to do life together, to share their lives with one another. And secondly, for the purpose of being transformed by the gospel. We kind of use two words to describe this. One is relational. You come together for the purpose of being in relationship with one another and drawing people into relationship with Christ. And then you come together for the purpose of being transformed by the good news of Christ, the gospel. So take a few minutes and just think about what this means for you and your context. In a few minutes, we'll talk about the way that we uniquely do groups at NCC through the semester system and through our experimentation of, of doing small groups out of the passions of our leaders. For right now, think about what does it mean to lead a group, a community of people to come together for the purpose of living life in relationship with one another and pursuing transformation with the gospel of Christ.